in the footsteps of Abraham. Hi everyone, welcome to the program In the Footsteps of Abraham. You're joining us from Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. here in Hong Kong, China. And before we get started, please use our comment section for you to submit your family names. And also, please share the link with your family and friends. Our topic today is, who was Isaac? We're going to come back after the testimonial. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Nagbukas ako ng negosyo sa pangarap na maging isang matagumpay na negosyante. Pero yung negosyo na yun ay bumagsak. Nagkaroon pa nga ako ng utang na higit kumulang 1.4 million pesos. Ako si Lorival. May negosyo ako na patungkol sa mga sasakyan. Nagbukas ako ng negosyo sa pangarap na maging isang matagumpay na negosyante. Pero yung negosyo na yun ay bumagsak. Ang dami ko ng utang. Dami ko natatanggap ng mga bouncing check. Minsan pa nga yung mga check eh, wala pang pangalan. Gipit na gipit na talaga kami noon. Maraming pagkakataon na puputulan kami ng kuryente, na puputulan kami ng tubig. Talagang kahihiyan. Minsan, kapag uuwi na ako ng bahay, ang pangitan ng sitwasyon kasi wala na kaming makain. May mga time pa nga na nandyan na yung may-ari ng mga sasakyan kasi kukunin na nila yung sasakyan namin. Bukod pa dito, galing rin ako sa ibang simbahan. Ako yung namumuno sa mga treasurer. Ako pa nga yung nagsusulat ng pangalan ng tao at kung magkano yung binibigay nila. Tapos, sinusulat ko rin yung pangalan ko dun. Pero yung totoo, ninanakawan ko yung Diyos. Kasi, sinusulat ko yung pangalan ko kahit hindi ko binabalik ang aking ikapo. At nga sa simbahan na yun, binibigyan ako ng pagkain. Pero ang ginagawa ko, dinadala ko pa yun sa bahay para kainin ang buong pamilya. Bukod pa sa tulong ng simbahan, nakakatanggap rin ako ng tulong sa aking mga kamag-anak. Tinitingnan ako ng lahat ng tao na parabang ako ay isang pinagpalang negosyante. Pero sa loob, walang kwenta, bagsak, wasak. Yung tipong tinitingnan kanila, pero hindi talaga nila alam kung ano yung tunay na nangyayari. Talagang nakakahiya. Minsan nahihiya na akong umuwi ng bahay. Baka kasi pag uwi ko may nag-aabang na sa akin. At ang tanging nasa isip ko lang ay pinanganak ako para maging mahirap. Pinanganak ako pero walang patutunguhan ng aking buhay. Pinanganak akong ganito at mamamatay akong palpak at talonan sa buhay. Talagang nakakahiya. Nakakahiya. Ang hirap talaga ng sitwasyon ko na gigising ako ng umaga, wala akong pera, pambili ng almusal. Hindi na nga ako makatulog sa gabi sa kakaisip ng anong gagawin ko bukas, eh wala naman akong magagawa sa buhay. Hanggang isang araw, tinawag ko yung asawa ko. Sabi ko, punta kaya tayo sa malaking simbahan. Huwag lang simbahang universal. Kasi malaki yung simbahang universal pero ayoko dun. Hanap tayo ng malaking simbahan na walang makakakilala sa atin. Kung saan hahanapin natin yung Diyos na walang nakakaalam sa sitwasyon ng ating buhay. Kung saan mananalangin lang tayo dun, uwi ng bahay, wala talagang nakakakilala sa atin. Nalala ko pa na binuksan ko yung TV. Tapos pagbukas ko ng TV, Service pa yun ni Bishop Macedo. Sunday service yun. Habang nanonood ako, merong kumuha ng atensyon ko. Binabanggit niya yung patungkol sa Diyos, sa malaking Diyos, sa malaking buhay na Diyos. Yung pinakamakapangyarihang Diyos na kung saan kayang bumago ng buhay ng tao. Tapos nagpakita siya ng mga testimony. Ang lalaki ng mga testimony. Yung panahon na yun, time pa yun ng Campaign of Israel. Pagbalik ko ng bahay, inimbita ko yung asawa ko. Medyo mahina pa nga yung boses ko kasi takot ako sa magiging reaksyon niya. Sabi ko, punta tayo sa Simbahang Universal bukas. Tumingin siya sa akin tapos sabi niya, yun nga dapat yung sasabihin ko sa'yo. Yung narinig ko yun, nagulat pa ako. Sabi ko, kinakausap na tayo ng Diyos. At sa ganitong paraan kami pumunta sa Simbahang Universal. Linggo pa nga yun. Pagdating ko doon, talagang nakinig ako sa lahat ng sinasabi sa service. Si Bishop pa noon nagpipreach patungkol sa Campaign of Israel. Pero yung panahon na yun, di ako nagtanong kung ano ba yung Campaign of Israel. At pumunta ako sa altar, kumuha ako ng envelope. 
talagang linagay ko yung buhay ko doon. At doon talagang napakalaki ng kasiguraduhan. Isang galit sa sitwasyon na may halong kasiguraduhan na ang Diyos may malaking bagay na gagawin. At doon ako sumali sa Campino of Israel. Talagang ginawa ko yung lahat. At nung time na nakuha ko yung envelope, hindi lang hiningi sa akin ng Diyos yung halaga ng pera. Ang hiningi sa akin ng Diyos kung ano yung nasa loob ko. Ang hiningi sa akin ng Diyos talagang ibigay ko, ilagay ko yung buong buhay ko sa altar niya. Hindi lang yung halaga ng pera sa envelope. Kung hindi ang aking kayabangan na maging tapat ako sa kanya kasi hindi talaga ako tapat sa Diyos. May dinadala akong yabang kasi pinagyayabang ko na may negosyo ako. Pero ang hiningi sa akin ng Diyos talaga lahat, binigay ko yung buong buhay ko, ang aking lahat sa altar. At hanggang sa dumating yung panahon na tutuparin ko na yung pangako ko sa altar, umakyat ako ng altar at pagbaba ko doon sa loob ko, ako ay higante na. Isang taong napakalakas, alam ko na yung Diyos ay kasama ko. Pagbaba ako sa altar, tinanggap ko yung espiritu ng altar, ang espiritu ng pananampalataya, ang espiritu ng kaalaman, at lahat ng yun ang nagpalakas sa akin. Ilang araw lang pagkalipas yung pag-akyat ko ng altar, may tumawag na agad sa akin ang dami ko ng kliyente, ang dami ko ng nasasarang kontrata, nababayaran ko na yung mga utang at lahat nag-uumpisa ng mangyari. Ngayon, ang dating bagsak na negosyo, ngayon matatawag ng tunay na negosyo, ngayon, meron na akong 36 na mga pamilyadong empleyado. Meron na akong 23 na malalaking truck. Ngayon, may sarili ng sasakyan ng aking negosyo. Ngayon, may bago na akong sasakyan. Pati rin yung aking asawa. Ngayon, nakatira ako sa the best condominium ng aming lugar. At marami na kaming sariling mga bahay. Lahat yun, bayad na. Wala na kaming utang. Hindi man ako ministro, ni Pastor Man. Pero ako mismo ang pagpapala. Dahil ako ay mayroong Espiritu Santo. Ngayon, pinagpapala ako ang aking asawa. Pinagpapala ako ang aking mga anak. Ngayon, ako ay isang milyonaryo na. At may maayos na pamilya. Rigit sa lahat, ang pinaka-importante, may Espiritu Santo ako. Ngayon, puspos ako ng Espiritu Santo. Kahit mamatay ako ngayon, sigurado ako sa aking kadigtasan. Pinakamalaking kayamanan ko ay ang Espiritu Santo. In the footsteps of Abraham. Welcome back to In the Footsteps of Abraham, a program that we're running from Monday to Friday, 10 p.m. Today's topic is about who was Isaac, the Bible hero that we focus on this year in July, is Abraham. The Bible says, look to Abraham, copy and imitate Abraham. And not only look at him, the Bible says, do the works of Abraham. In fact, faith without works is dead. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But this faith has to be accompanied with works. So the big question here is, Why do we need to sacrifice? Why does the Bible encourage us to sacrifice if Jesus already sacrificed on the cross? Well, it's very clear. The faith and the works that we present, when you put them together, it's a faith that is proven. It's a faith materialized. For example, if you want to purchase a house, you want to buy a piece of land, you cannot pay with words. You cannot pay just with words. You have to prove and give a sign. Normally, the landlord or the person that is offering you the piece of land, they want a deposit. And when you present a deposit, works, then they are confident and they will give you the keys of the house or they will transfer the title deed of the land on your name. That's the beginning of the transaction. And the same happens with God. We have to demonstrate our faith to God. 
And that's exactly where the element of sacrifice enters. Now, in Abraham's case, it was very clear. The Bible says God tested Abraham. And he was very clear. He said, Abraham, give me Isaac, your son, your only beloved son, what you love the most. And when God asked us to sacrifice, he's clear. He do not leave room for doubt. And he will point out exactly what he wants from us. Right, Pastor Robert? Yes, Bishop. Good evening. Good evening, all the viewers. Faith cannot be just by words. The Bible says also that, you know, faith without words is dead. So what, what is the work? The work is the expression. For example, in the case of Abraham, it was the sacrifice that God called him, God, you know, tested him in the name is Isaac. So how can, how can I show God that I believe in his promise? Just open the Bible and say, my God, I believe you know, there must be something else. And is when the sacrifice, when I need to prove God, I materialize my faith to God. When they come to the altar, I obey His voice and they present the sacrifice that God His request from me. Yes, and when we talk about the sacrifice, every sacrifice has a name. You know, the name of Abraham's sacrifice was Isaac. The name of Gideon's sacrifice was the second bull and we call it karabao so every sacrifice that god asks has a name right pastor vincent yes good evening bishop and all the viewers uh, god is very clear as you said bishop when he asks people for what he wants them to sacrifice but when people they want to reverse the process they want to ask God first, but they don't want to sacrifice. So the altar is empty in the life of the person is empty. God asked Abraham first before fulfilling his promise. So we must hear God's voice first. And once he speaks with us in a clear way, this is what I want you to sacrifice. When we obey his voice and we put the perfect sacrifice on the altar, that's the time we can say to God, I did my part. So now, Lord, I want you to do this in my life, Bishop. Sure. Yeah, so this is the campaign of Israel that we're talking about. It's a challenge of faith. It's testing our faith. And when this happens, extraordinary things, they take place in your life. Remember that God, he wants you to reflect his image in your family, at work, at home in the church, outside the church, in everything you do, you must shine the glory of God. And for that to happen, you have to give him permission for him to mold you, to use you, allow him to speak to you. His will is infinitely greater than our will. In that case, you have to say, let your will be done, not my will. I've got here with me the campaign envelope. And inside of the envelope, we have the prayer request that people are writing. And then together with the prayer request and the envelope that you put inside, we prepare our Isaac, our Karabao. Now, we're gonna go for a short break. Before we do that, please submit in the comment section your family names that we'll be lifting up in prayer in the sanctuary. And then when we come back, we're gonna meet each other there for the prayer. Stay with us. This is In the Footsteps of Abraham. What is the campaign of Israel? It's a challenge of faith based upon the Word of God, an occasion where many prayer requests are taken to the Holy Land. It showed us great power in the past. The objective of this great campaign is to awaken people's faith. When a person's faith is awakened and it's put into practice, through that faith, they will see a miracle in their life. Regardless of skin color, race, education, religion, social status, or physical appearance, who then should participate of this campaign? 
answer is anyone who wants to see a total transformation in their lives. Campaign of Israel at the Gate of Heron. In the footsteps of Abraham. Welcome back to In the Footsteps of Abraham. You find us here in the sanctuary on the altar. And this is the place where we begin the journey. Remember that Jesus is the door, the way, the truth, and the life. If you pass through Jesus, you will find salvation and green pastures. Now, Abraham, he found that door in Haran. He left Haran, the old life. And he went to the land of promise, Canaan, in Israel. And here at the back, that's the gate that he left. We're going to be in this gate on July. And we'll be returning our campaign envelope, our vow, our sacrifice, and our prayer request. Here on the altar at the gate. Now, the question today is, who was Isaac. Isaac was the son of Abraham, but he had two sons. He had a son called Ishmael and another son called Isaac. God was very specific. Sacrifice, give me your son Isaac, not Ishmael, the one that you love the most. So how will you know that you are giving to God the sacrifice that is Isaac and not Ishmael, Pastor Vincent. So Bishop, when the sacrifice is real and perfect, it causes pain. The life of the person will put in risk. So that's the best way for us to identify if we are offering Isaac or not on the altar. When it's Ishmael, it's an offering, a good offering, but it's not what God is asking the person to sacrifice and it will not work. I don't believe that, you know, for, for Abraham was easy. <laughs> Imagine, because God said, you go to that mount, and the journey was three days and a half. So he had to walk. Imagine talking to Isaac. And he did not reveal to Isaac. Because in Isaac, on the, on the mountain, he asked the father, Father, the altar is here. What about the sacrifice in the mind of Abraham? Shop? Yeah, there will be an emotional struggle inside of you, definitely. But that's a good sign. We're going to get ready for the moment of prayer. Please lift up your hands, in our, stretch them out in our direction. Close your eyes, please. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I lift up all the names in the comment section. Especially the children of the mothers and the fathers. Children that need direction. They need guidance in their love life. At school, my father, I pray for the children that are being bullied as well, my father, that have low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, that have as well, my Lord, addiction problems. They are hooked on drugs, shabu. They are, my Lord, struggling, trying to overcome, my father, alcoholism, cigarettes, drug abuse, gambling, video gaming, my father, all negativity, bad spirit, negative emotion, and all, my Lord, insomnia, and all nightmares, all physical pains, sickness, and diseases. Get away from our family right now. My Lord, I minister to this family the marriage restoration, the healing, the deliverance, also the unity, the harmony, and the peace, my Father. Give this family and the children, especially my Father, total restoration emotionally, mentally, physically, in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and Father, we know that we must hear God's voice. Don't let the faith of your people be emotional. They will not listen to their hearts. Their faith will be above feelings, emotions. And they will prepare the Isaac as soon as possible. 
and offer him up on God's altar, maybe on behalf of the family, maybe on behalf of their, themselves. But once the perfect sacrifice is given, your power will be showed to them and they will see the impossible become impossible. So give courage to your people to obey your voice, my Lord, in Jesus' name. And rebuke, my God, all the voice, negative, fears, emotion, everything, my God, that is, is, is trying to distract this person. Is trying, my God, to, my Lord, make this person feel, my God, afraid. My Lord, the faith that was revealed to Abraham. And he obeyed. He obeyed, my God, your voice. And in the end, you honored him. You exalted him. And that's what the, the altar is waiting for this person to transform, to change, my God. We, we determine that all those who are in this faith, they will have a new name. They will have, my God, a great experience with your power in Jesus Christ's name. My Father, I bind with your servants today. And Lord, I determine, my Father, that everybody that is participating in the campaign, they will reach the land of Canaan. It will not be easy, but God is giving them condition and ability. And if you believe, say, Amen. Very well. This is the prayer that God has chosen from the altar for you today. We're going to be back tomorrow within the footsteps of Abraham. God bless you and a very good night. Bye-bye. From Beersheba he set out one day To Mount Moriah he trod Deep in thought as a boy Walked silent beside A mystery he kept in his heart As the others just followed his path Knowing the man who they looked to was bonded to God. The day came to a close. They rested to gather their strength. With morning the sun called them on to continue their quest. Old Abraham, fearless and brave, knew God was greater than great walk boldly onward to prove the depth of his faith three days journey had passed when finally they arrived at the place where his faith would be challenged tested and tried his servants waited behind the child and he walked alone making it clear that the two would return later on isaac walked on in front a beautiful boy to behold maybe then was when Abraham's tears had started to roll. Isaac asked, Father, where is the lamb, the one for the burnt sacrifice? My son, the sacrifice lamb, God will provide. He'll provide. He'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb God will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb God will provide 
with care and respect he prepared an altar to God on that day placing the wood and the kindling to set it ablaze he picked up his child bound with cords laid him on to the altar to slay a sharpened knife in his hand he raised over his boy. Abraham stood firm in his faith. God's plan he refused to deny. Ready to do any task his God had required. The angel cried out, Abraham, don't lay your hand on the boy for now i know you fear god you are blessed evermore he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb god will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb god will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb god will provide he'll provide he'll provide my son the sacrifice lamb god will provide be sure the victory is yours god will provide be sure the victory is yours God will provide